Hi Ashish, how are you? How are you doing? Thank you first of all for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. I'm glad to be here and uh, you know after the story that you told me from 1997, even more heartening to get connected again. <laughs> yeah, after what 20, 20, more than 20 years. Ashish, I must start with something which I find hilarious because two days back you were viral on social media because of the legendary statement that you made that unicorn is an ugly mythical animal and you would rather be a cockroach because you can survive all conditions. So eight people send me that message on WhatsApp. So you have arrived in life is what I want to tell you in the true <laughs> sense. And you know one more point I'd like to make from the cockroach association of the world is that not only is cockroach can survive any conditions, but even the poop of the cockroach has nitrogen in it and it is important to balance the forest ecosystem so i completely agree with you any further thoughts you would like to add to this statement you are like the new oscar wilde of business oh my god listen look uh let me set it in context right and i've been saying this for a while i am nothing against unicorns look it's a great validation for your organization to be valued at a billion dollars plus and i think it's fantastic right and i think it's great for the ecosystem over the last 4 or 5 days you've had so much validation in the indian inter- entrepreneur ecosystem where entrepreneurs are getting validated for all the effort that they put in my only comment and because it shouldn't be uh, out of context is that that should not be the only purpose of your business the purpose of a business is to draw from society create value and be a uh, valuable back to society and that arbitrage in between is what creates value for you and now this is a great by product and a validation that you are worth that much but if it becomes your life's mission and goal to be a unicorn then i said it's an ugly mythical animal which doesn't actually exist has anybody seen a unicorn in real life but you've seen cockroaches and i think survival is the key and it was also that i had said this um in Siddharth Rao's book in 2018, I think, but I think Sanjeev uh, picked it up, Sanjeev Bikjandar, and then he posted it and it just went viral. It's gone crazy. It's, it's absolutely gone crazy. Yeah. Well, I have another analogy if you if you want something more crazy. And people tell me, you know, I was asked a question once and said, you know, cockroach, cockroach, chodo. Koi or animal ka baare mein socho na. I said, uh, we are mongrels. So he said, hey, you're calling yourself a dog? I said, yeah. I mean, you know, you're free as an entrepreneur to do what you want, and uh, if somebody is polite and kind, uh, you know, you pay back with love. Uh, if there's a pack of dogs on the opposite side of the road, which is competition, uh, there's always another day to pick a fight. Uh, you know, and and you don't have to pick a fight on that day. Um, uh, you're free to do what you want, and uh, you know, you're a mongrel. It's a, it's a street fight fight out there. It's the survival of the fittest, and so he's saying. You know, whole day you're giving these analogies of mongrels and cockroaches. Danda kabi karte ho. You know, um, uh, I used to I used to do a stand-up piece on this that as a freelancer you are like a stray dog, and you know, uh, wh- wh- while a domesticated dog is like a guy in a job. You have all the independence. You can eat anything <laughs> on the road. He has all the protection, but he doesn't have freedom, right? Exactly. It's very, very similar to yours. You know, Ashish. Uh, before we d- uh, delve into you know yeah. the business side of it and the mind and the you know the, your philosophies and stuff like that, I want to ask you one thing. Somewhere I read that Ashish is a people's guy, so he has a lot of parties, but he comes back home and then he becomes his private person, and that space is his switch off space. So, who are you exactly? Are you a social guy or you are a private guy I, i mean every human has a lot of everybody has a lot of facets and there's duality in everything that you do there is a persona of your work persona there's a friends persona there's there are various personas to your to your character some of them blend and and some of it is at the core on who you truly are honestly speaking i'm a, i'm a private guy and uh, while you know being social out there and and being with people is a part of the job and something that i enjoy but at the core i'm i'm a very private person and so maybe 50 people if at all have ever been to my home so i may entertain people at the yacht club or you know on my boat or you meet people outside in social environments and i enjoy that aspect but uh, i let very few people in into the private side which is your home or certain places which are so uh, dear to you i also find uh, the world that we live in today and i may sound very old school is this whole groups yeah you know on on various social media and it's almost like i remember 
if you used to date a girl and you had to break up you had to go up to her and tell her and the pushback was a slap on your face then it moved to the phone and you could do it over the phone and hang up then it became a text message and you could text message and now it's social media i'm a little in love little out of love so you're telling somebody you're in love but the other person you're not and then you leave it cryptic i think we're living in this world of crypto <laughs> and i just find it so stupid that if you cannot be real if you want to wish somebody on their birthday pick up the phone and call them or have a beer with someone and otherwise it's just uh, you and yourself on being private on and you shouldn't be on social media as much you should if it's required for your work or whatever but to keep in touch and so i have this duality of running an internet business which depends on social media and being out there and putting yourself out there on the flip side on who you really are and it's constantly this uh, i wouldn't say it's a battle but it's a constant negotiation with yourself on how to balance the two so i'm i'm a bit of both and you also quite a ambitious guy you always say you are like a you know fearless sindhi but to sing on your wedding four songs for your wife could have backfired right it's too risky <laughs> well it was just the closest friend so either they'd be uh, uh, too drunk with the, the the notes which didn't sound right or they would have enjoyed the music <laughs> nobody ever gave me that feedback though <laughs> good so ashish i would like to start with one very important facet from the sporting world that i've learned which i had the opportunity to travel with the indian team for 15 years and then watch right. sport be closely across the world and one thing people talk about is routine things that you do regularly so that that leads you to the point of complete concentration which in sporting balance is called the zone that that's a point where you you know your body just reacts everything is going beautifully well and people la- laugh at rafa nadal but you know when he actually changes the bottle uh, uh, you know wh- where to keep it one inch here and there but i understand that how important a routine is for a sports person and i believe okay. that you know business leaders like you also have gone through your routine what is your routine that go- makes you go to the le- next level of concentration look you can call it routine or you can call it loopiness right you are obsessed about certain core things in your life and there is no fatigue because the effort itself gives you joy exhilaration and energy and if the effort becomes a chore then you will never deliver results in anything right so whether you go to the gym and and if there is a goal uh, you know i and i don't want to quote philosophy but krishna's discourse to arjun on the battlefield of the mahabharat was if your intent is good and the end goal is in sight then the means could be wrong and whatever the means whatever works for you whatever floats your boat and so for me i think sailing is a very important part of my routine on on weekends where you actually switch off and it's a lesson in humility every time because you can moan and bitch about the conditionality there's no you can't bitch about the conditions if the tide is strong or the wind is down or the sun is too hot or it's raining or doing whatever you can't say that this is good or bad you have to react by adjusting your sails and so it's a lesson in inwardness to say you've got to look within um and not complain about the external so that's one lesson that i draw draw from my sailing and that routine that i keep at it every weekend and it's a community that i love and you don't have any time to think about your work at that time because you're only thinking about the wind and the tide and your the your team and the competitiveness on the on on the folks around you the other is on my routine is i think uh, just staying fit is is very important extremely important for me to just do whatever it it doesn't have to be the gym or or running or cycling or whatever right now i'm i'm in goa and my routine is very different so i've i've picked up surfing as a sport over the last uh three months again the elements of nature uh, but your outdoors cycling has become very important to me, to me three times a week i cycle about 20 kilometers every time i go out there so it's about those basic things you take four or five things in life and they could be transitory in the sense that at a certain point in your life those five are very important and then maybe you do that for 10 or 15 years and then maybe your body doesn't keep up or your mind you have a mind shift and then for the next 10 or 15 years then you pick up those and so i think that's the important of routine in your life it's also that nothing comes quickly until you put in that kind of effort over a long period of time and it's like that chemistry experiment right where that drop falls and there is that change in state and it will happen in i forget the number of drops but it will happen after those x number of drops so till then your effort is meaningless and pointless to you 
but you know when you hit that uh, number of drops it will suddenly change the color will suddenly change yeah. and if you don't go through that effort for that long period of time you would never know the fruits that's the malcolm gladwell 10000 hour theory that i mean you have to do those many hours to come to a point of personal excellence correct and most people tell you na yaar oh you are so and so or you know there's success in life or or whatever that success for different people is different thing but i just feel that uh, nobody has seen the 20 year effort or the 10 year effort or the 5 year effort or the struggles that you've gone through to reach that and so uh, i i keep saying that uh, success is a bastard it has many fathers right and when it's a failure you get abandoned but you have to go through some of those life experiences and those failures and those and if you can draw from those learnings or that effort or that loopiness or that schedule over a period of time to get to something that you are setting yourselves on that goal it's your objective it's your journey to walk it's your journey to climb and it's not somebody else's story and then it becomes everybody else's story at some point of time which is also okay but you must have the humility to go back inwardly to think about that so i think it's a few of those like philosophies that i keep it simple and don't over complicate life and then you know the rest is you're actually a small parenthesis in a very long journey of life this is just a don't give it too much importance absolutely absolutely you know you said two in- interesting things one is lessons from sailing and second is failure and i want to touch on both these aspects and i because i've deep down you know i go into a sport and understand it sailing to me you know i mean it is just unbelievable how it reflects life you have to be a kind of a multitasker of a different level here you need to understand you need to be physically fit i mean you guys call it sheets but for me it's ropes but you actually use those and effectively then you need to be a weather guy who needs to understand currents and wind then you need to still manage a team and then you need to take decision making and then finally you need to also control your emo- emotions like the great sir B- uh, bilansley says that you can be very angry with your people but you still need to go towards uh, uh, where the boat needs to go so what is your top lesson that you took from sailing and this failure the second part i'd like you to address like you know you mentioned very clearly like the great michael jordan was asked why were you so successful he said because i failed a lot Right. and i these are two facets which came out from what you said i like you to reflect on these two if i were to draw uh, some analogies from sailing it would be that you have no time or or emotion to vent or complain about anything external everything that you do is inward because it's your own effort the wind the tide the conditions everything number 1 number 2 and un- like any other sport where the rules are made to box you and define you where if you are driving a car there's a circuit uh, if you are uh, playing tennis there are lines in sailing there are no lines right there are boys that you have to go around you can go to timbuktu and come back but you use the rules to actually disadvantage your opponent and use the rules to advantage you by disadvantaging somebody else so they say the best criminals make the best sailors and vice versa so I, i don't want to go down that path but you're always uh, using the rules to bend uh, your strategy to be able to to win in that sport the other is the boat is your island and you cannot abandon ship it is your island and it is your team you cannot finish a race if somebody is man overboard because safety is first so you have to care for everybody on board and then if somebody does go overboard you have to go around to pick that person to complete your race you can't leave any man behind that's another lesson that is very important in sailing the other one in sailing is you, when you are in the moment in the zone you could be the helmsman you could be the helm which is or the the strategy head you could be at the at the doing whatever job on the boat no job is too big or small and you have to throw everything at it if something is going wrong you all have to go at it uh, because it could be between life and death it could be between capsizing and not it could be without about winning and losing things break on a boat everybody ne- then needs to chip in so it's a complete team effort and uh, another funny thing is that all your frustration from the week can come out on the boat because you can abuse and abuse and abuse and that's what we did amongst ourselves to the other competitor and you know sailors have very foul mouths and uh, and and what you can't do in a corporate environment and at a work environment anything goes it's all out there it is all out there 
but the beautiful lesson about sailing and it, and it's important that, and it's pertinent to note that sailors are the happiest people you will notice that sailors are always happy and smiling always they are just so happy and whatever ha- happens on the water stays on the water whatever anger animosity you touched it as a just boat you had a problem on the water when you are on land your friends again that's another lesson in sailing that you don't hold grudges whatever grudges that you happen are on the water but not on land so these are the kind of lessons that i've at least been able to learn from sailing and, and join those dots and and apply those learnings in my professional and my personal life that is absolutely beautiful i think the best take out of this is friendship right when you are in it together and you're facing all the natural calamities and personal calamities when you the when the battle is over are you friends again and i think that's very important lesson that we should take in organizations as well because you know too many personal grudges are held against each other for a job which has which is in hand which is a common goal you when you start uh, as an entrepreneur uh, one of the biggest challenges of entrepreneur especially is that hey the guys that i'm recruiting are not the guys that i want them to be because you are operating at a certain excellence yeah. and the ability of an entrepreneur is to say okay this guy may not be good at this but can i do better and unfortunately yeah. many times you start recruiting people like you and that doesn't make a great organization correct absolutely absolutely you know i i think when you're when you're recruiting for me and our philosophy in recruiting has always been that the first handshake or that hello that attitude is more important than the skills because skills yaar keep morphing and changing and you can teach those skills you know you can always coach somebody and they would teach you a few skills uh, along that journey of your of your professional career but it's that first handshake and that that x factor or that edge which comes to you when you know something that you are lacking or you like something in somebody which you don't have and it's that man this guy has it or he or she has it and it's that attitude yes. and then you work on you know is that a person a team player can they work with a team and you're and i keep telling people and i know you're a you're a cricket uh, uh you know journalist but i use a soccer philosophy more than cricket when i say that you're running a team even the the water boy is important or the goalkeeper is twiddling his thumbs uh throughout the match and it could be a draw and then he becomes the most important person when there is a when there is a shootout or a penalty shootout and till then nobody even cares the guy is fully clad with gloves and you know he's standing at and doing nothing it could be a goalless game so at any given point of time how do you rotate your resources and how do you resource plan is extremely critical for you and in me as an entrepreneur is always that intuitiveness about a person because if you look at a person cv or who they are how they are within the company and all the skill sets that they built i have the knack to be able to pick that person and say i'm going to rotate him or her here or i'm going to put them in a position which they are uncomfortable with and i have seen over a period of time the delivery has been phenomenal look look at book my show today uh, i mean to the external world we are out in the dumps right we're a company which focuses on getting people to step out and there is no stepping out today whether it's live events that business is 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 up shit creek movies you know it's locked in uh so we're we're in a very very hard place but drawing from our lessons in the past where we've been through the dot com bust we three been through the gfc global financial crisis we've actually taken a step back before we can take a leap forward we've cut costs we've gone inward i almost use the analogy i keep telling people that there is a submarine we've reduced our burn on the nuclear you know a uh, button or 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 the our uh, nuclear fuel we've gone under the radar our periscope is down only time will tell in 18 or 24 months how much distance we've covered and that's when we're going to put the periscope up and surface till then just go below the radar so we've put a lot of plans in place the whole team has come together the one family we're working on things we launched stream book my show stream incidentally that's that's on the AWS uh you know platform because this is a business we had to we actually as a company had to unlearn to learn again because we don't know how to ingest content we didn't know how to decrypt encrypt how to uh you know uh go out there and do contracts how to do a uh, uh, overlay of of um, of captions and things like that i mean we didn't know how to we were an e-commerce company which sold tickets to get people to step out 
and now we're telling people to step in and watch uh, premium tvod transactional vod films which is an outstanding collection of curated films based on an ai layer that we have on your on your um, viewing pattern on movies that you might have missed things that you would like to watch and now we're delivering that to your home um on 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 fire stick on android tv on apple tv and so stream for us is a completely diametrically 180 business which is uh, which was born out of a necessity on taking a step back before we could take a step forward and just to give you a sense i we would take it by surprise zack snyder's um, justice league released on book my show and we've crossed 175000 stream of people that have literally gone and bought a ticket on book my show to rent that movie and that is just one title and we have taken off to a flying start and this is something that we just didn't know how to do cloud computing uh the friendly folks at aws helped us and with a cdn and all of that but i'm just saying that uh it was just incredible uh, and it's serendipitous that i'm talking to you as a aws um, you know conversation where this entire business in the lockdown was built on a platform and uh, it was a delta to a tech that we knew how to build tech and so we took that leap we decided in may last year and then we started working on in september where we put squads together of teams uh because we just said who wants to do this because we don't just don't know how but we'll fail together but let's learn and then we were supposed to launch in december we were unhappy with it we said let's launch in jan unhappy with the product and therefore we launched in in february and then uh, we were like let's just go live and let's take a risk out there if we fail we'll apologize to our customers but let's just go there and then it took off to a flying start this is absolutely amazing to hear this uh, ashish keep on the good work i think this continues for a while now uh, next 2 3 months are also pretty critical in this journey you know one aspect of uh, book my show somewhere i read which was just too good was you know i've always believed that health physical health that is is a very important component that corporations miss out on because if you are physically better your endorphins are in coming in buckets your mental health is good your productivity is good today's research the harvard business review would say that happy employees are productive employees all of that and I, it's amazing right it's like as basic as you can get and somewhere i read that that even your bonuses were once upon a time dependent on your <laughs> physical fitness i think that was epic yeah i mean salary rate depending on heart rate is just too good do you continue to are boss i wanted to do that but then you know my legal team and hr said like you know we can get into deep shit with that and i said look i i i don't know the rules again you know as entrepreneurs you are rule breakers and for me i kept pushing the envelope where i said if you don't improve your bmi and your bf you know uh, bmr your uh, bmi and your and your composition and you everybody starts off at a certain metric which is your own and if you don't get better with your lipids and other sort of five six markers your bonus would get impacted and i was basically shut down <laughs> over a year and a half by hr and 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 uh, legal however however what we have done is that we offer a f- so we do insurance and we do mediclaim uh what we are now doing is a top up which people can take and basically double your insurance but it will be based on certain health parameters that you have and therefore your premium will come down which we are institutionalizing within and it's going to be part of one of the angel invested companies that i've done it he is working towards creating a gamification formula that one person could pay 3000 or 5000 or 6000 as a premium and the other guy could pay 500 bucks but because his health parameters are better and how do you sort of get that and then you get offer so we're trying to institutionalize that yeah and the other thing that we've done is we've got a very healthy balance sheet it took us copious amounts of trial and errors to get suppliers to uh, give us great food which was healthy and from it being tasty and we got a lot of blowback from employees internally that taste nahi hai maza nahi hai isme you know ye nahi hai and we said boss no oil no spices and you know all that rubbish that was going on but now everybody is made peace with that that it's delicious yet nutritious and therefore that's another way that we are impacting the third is we have a gym in the office and we encourage people to do that so look and then it's leading by example look i'm really touching 50 right i'm i'm 47 48 and at least our leadership group we're constantly egging ourselves on on uh, being healthy being fit uh we constantly glorify our workouts uh, each one of us has different sports 
so rcto mahesh is an avid 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 cricketer and um, and so we glorify all his stories and he keeps winning games and we put mahesh up on this thing uh, mazdi uh, who leads the relationship with aws and he's a head of product is uh, is great physically fit but he's also used to be a national snooker champion and he's still at the top of his game on snooker so sailing is a very important part of my life and obviously uh, keeping fit for all of us so we keep putting out these stories as much as we can and glorifying them and that's the only impact that i can have but look if i didn't get into legal trouble or hr trouble i would love to then go back to metrics versus <laughs> bonuses that would be ideal I, I promise you to come back with a creative solution on this which will be <laughs> away from legal problems <laughs> like i'll tell you if you were to tell me that hey listen the guys at book my show the guys who have dropped by 20% and improved their metrics by 20% would get a half an hour session to meet virat kohli i'm sure all of this would change <laughs> so you know just just to add to what you said it is about the culture right i mean you're building the culture that people who are going to be like uh, c- celebrated uh, s- from a sports point of view are going to be recognized internally i think that itself is going to put a message across the organization that hey you're going to get some premium points how do you tangibilize the premium points is something that we can discuss offline i have some few thoughts <laughs> awesome awesome i'd love to hear that you know couple of more points uh, what is your philosophy on meetings we all know that meetings is the backbone of organizations and whenever i worked in corporate they had no closures it was more of a social occasion and uh, it was good to uh, you know interact with ms dhoni he said team meeting 10 minute ke upar nahi hona chahiye sabko pata hai sab kya karna hai 10 minute mein sirf batana hai ki is jagah jana hai and some people like to go into details and stuff what is how do you conduct a meeting i i i'm still learning uh unfortunately meetings which were in the physical world were very very painful i'll i'll tell you what i don't like and what i like and i, I want to change a lot especially ever since covid hit and we've gone digital i find meetings uh far more timely i'm actually the worst timekeeper so for me i'm usually late like today which is one really it's it's my shortcoming which i've got to improve on but it's getting better with with zoom because you're 10 minutes late as opposed to half an hour or 40 minutes late so i think that's a big shortcoming that i have so i've got bonita who's my sister who keeps me on on check and track all the time and she's been my greatest asset as far as that is concerned the other thing that i completely dislike in in physical meetings at least is this whole culture of coffee leke aao nobody gets their own coffee then the guy is mixing his tea mixing his sugar it's so painful that you're you're wasting time on nonsensical things unpreparedness not having a document or coming unprepared to a meeting having a laptop or a phone in a meeting oh my god you are not conversing people are on their phone and so i created a rule in my meetings there was a box outside everybody kept their devices outside you keep your device outside and come into a meeting more than 50% of your time gets saved if the phones are not with you it's just uncanny that there are five people in a meeting also of having many people people tend to add a lot of people in a meeting you started off with four it becomes 15 it becomes 20 that's another thing that i've cut in meetings if it doesn't fit into like today i'm i'm on your screen and i and, and it's the way of the format and i can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 little boxes I don't want more than four or five boxes, you know, on on my little iPad, because then I know there's a lot of BS that's floating around, and people are just adding people. The other is presentations. I can't handle those presentations; they are unnecessary. I'd rather you know people just present very quickly on a board or on a white sheet than if somebody has taken so much time to create a presentation, then they have wasted a lot of people's time because they are wowing you with a lot of BS, which is. how it looks good and how it presented if there was a point which was extremely important you could have said it in a far more crisp manner without a presentation so these are some philosophies that i have of not keeping a phone or a device in a meeting not having presentations not wasting time on coffee and tea bring your own coffee carry it with you rather than you know ordering and having somebody come in it's a very lala culture keeping it really crisp keeping you know the group really tidy coming prepared to a meeting not coming prepared to a meeting and groups arguing with each other who should have been on the same side that tells me a lot about team play and management but i love dhoni's piece that it can't be more than 10 minutes that's something i want to work towards 
being timely is another thing that i want to work towards so there's always scope for improvement i learned something new from you today i'm going to try and institutionalize those amazing i mean thank you so much ashish uh, last one minute predict the future look i'm no soothsayer uh, or fortune teller but i think uh, the roaring 20s will be back by 2022 i truly believe that there will be a lot more consumer spend and pent up demand that's going to come i think people are going to be more discerning to say what they want to do uh i think there'll be a lot more deeper respect for real relationships and family and home and true meaningful relationships there's going to be a disruption in the way people will consume content cinemas are here to stay live events are definitely here to stay uh but there will be a lot of disruption in how digitally subscription and online businesses will also work and t board and premium board and s board and a board there's going to be a lot of lot of changes there as well i feel uh you know the world will come out a better place people who lost lost loved ones uh, will remember them once their survival instincts are over and uh, i think there's a lot of good at least that's the optimism on an, in an entrepreneur that always speaks is that there's a there's a huge uh, silver lining to this dark cloud there's a light at the end of the tunnel and not another train uh, that's approaching you at, at least i i can see that coming and things will get worse before they get better as you can see but i'm i'm hopeful for the future and and a better world out there I totally agree with you Ashish I am an eternal optimist I truly believe the word gratitude has finally come into our lives where yeah. a lot of people who are starting to use these words I also believe to you know add to what you said probably these are the most innovative innovating times because you know, when you are in trouble you find new ways to do uh, stuff uh, and uh, really it's been an absolutely inspirational chat personal mastery understanding people and now predicting the future thank you so much Ashish for doing this really enjoyed myself thank you vikram and thank you everybody at uh, aws for putting this together but thank you appreciate it